What's up everybody? It's part four of the automatic to manual swap here on my 86 Bullnose F-150. Uh, today's D-Day basically. We're ripping the old automatic out and preparing everything for the new manual four speed to go in. Um, it's gonna be fun. Probably gonna end up covered in transmission fluid. So uh, that'll be cool. But uh, hopefully we'll try to get most of it in the bucket. But every time I mess with this stupid AOD, because there's no drain plug on this uh, pan, uh, it, it just always ends up going everywhere. So anytime you pull a transmission, you're getting trans fluid on you. It's just inevitable. Um, but anyways, I'm going to start off by, well, first, we started off by getting the truck about three foot in the air because it's so low. Um, and then I got the rear wheels chalk. We got jack stands under it. So next order of business is going to be pulling the drive shaft. Um, I'll take that back. <clears throat> First order of business is going to be draining the transmission fluid out of it. And uh, then we're going to take the drive shaft out, start disconnecting all the transmission lines, speedo cable, uh, pull the starter, and then uh, pull, pull the cross member transmission, rear transmission mount. And then it's just, you start pulling your bell housing bolts, uh, torque converter bolts and all that and she should come out of there so anyways guys i'm gonna jump into it flip the camera around and we'll start this uh process so thanks for joining me make sure y'all hit that subscribe button and uh this is part four like i said of this series uh, once i complete this whole series on the channel you can go check it out i'm gonna compile it all together into one video but if you're just wanting to look at the individual series, maybe you just want to know how to do the clutch pedal assembly. Maybe you just want to know how to do pulling the trans. Maybe you just want to know how to install your, you know, uh, slave cylinder and clutch master cylinder. I have it all broken down. That way you ain't got to watch a huge video, but it's up to you guys, but I appreciate y'all watching and uh, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out and uh, channel's growing and getting a lot of people, which is cool. Appreciate all you guys that, already sub to the channel that comment and uh, keep up with the build. So appreciate you guys a lot and uh, thank you. All right, let's get into it. So let's get her drained. Like I thought. Oh, so I'll let that drain here. And uh, there's a lot of fluid in these transmissions, surprisingly. So, got my big five gallon bucket. That's brand new transmission fluid. Basically, I probably got less than 100 miles on it, but oh well. Well, we'll let that drain. Um, probably gonna pull off these exhaust pipes. Just to give me a little extra room. May just end up taking the whole header off, actually. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be in the way or not. We'll see. But uh, I got to take these headers off anyways because I'm putting GT40 heads on this. But I was wanting to leave them on here just so I could test this transmission. But anyways, uh, next order of business, uh, pulling the drive shaft. But we're going to let this drain some more. That way when we pull the drive shaft out of the tail shaft, Nothing comes pouring out of there. Well, I got the drive shaft taken out and the fluids drained and some of the other miscellaneous stuff down there unhooked. But uh, I'm having to take these headers off, I got the right hand side off the problem. This side, I'm having trouble getting that bolt. So Jace is in the engine bay taking the last bolt out for me because the truck is uh so high i can't reach it so anyways once we get these headers taken off and the starter unbolted i can start taking the bell housing bolts off and uh should be able to pull that trans out well it's a different day i gotta apologize to you boys and girls i uh didn't film the whole process of removing the transmission. Uh, once I got under there, I started getting grease and transmission fluid all over my hands. Um, it was just too hard to, to work the camera 
and I don't want to mess my phone up. Uh, my wife would probably be pretty mad if I, if I destroyed a $1,500 phone trying to film a YouTube video. But uh, anyways, I just I uh, couldn't film it. I apologize. But, I mean, once you guys are under there, it, well, first off, every truck's going to be different. You know, models, years, they all range. Everybody's got different transmissions, automatic versus manual, you know, AODs and uh, whatever. I mean, I don't know what you got in your truck. So anyways, that, that process is really going to be different uh, for everybody. But essentially, it's just uh, pulling your bell housing bolts, unbolting your uh, torque converter from the flywheel and all that, um, pulling your flywheel off. Uh, I got the starter unhooked. I got those headers out of the way, as you saw in the last clip. My little buddy helped me with that, so I appreciate, appreciate him. And uh, anyways, uh, I... Completely took the cross member out and just got that out of the way. Uh, it's only a few bolts and it makes life a lot easier if you just completely take that thing out of there rather than just unbolting your transmission mount. Um, but other than that, it was it was easy. Uh, I ended up <laughs> taking a couple extensions and just making me a super long extension on the end of my impact. That way I could reach up there and get those bell housing bolts out. But uh, after I after I took the bell housing bolts disconnected the transmission lines um disconnect you know disconnected my my shift linkage it, it came out of there really easy uh I, had, I have a transmission jack if you don't have one of those highly suggest getting yourself a transmission jack it makes life a lot easier unless you got a buddy that can help you um, you can do it with a floor jack it's just a little dangerous um back in the day when i did one of these i actually uh, the transmission fell off the uh, just regular old car jack because it's so unstable and actually chipped a piece of my bell housing off. Luckily, I could still bolt the transmission up, but I've I, you know I've seen other guys drop them, break their whole bell housings, and it can cost you a lot of money, a lot more than what a transmission jack would have cost you. So, anyways, just food for thought. But I apologize for not filming that process. But uh, we're gonna jump back into it. Uh, it's nighttime out here in Florida. Uh, we're in October, so it feels great. My favorite time to work on uh, trucks and stuff out there in the shop. So next order of business, uh, I actually replaced the rear main seal uh, right before I started this video. Just added insurance. Uh, mine was leaking. If yours ain't leaking, I would still just go ahead and replace it. You know, you don't want to pull a transmission. You don't want to do this whole swap or, you know, whatever you're doing under there, pulling a transmission and get it all back together and two months down the road your rear main seal is leaking so it's a couple of dollars i buy fell pros they last you know really long time fell pro makes good products so while you're under there i would suggest go ahead and replacing it if you really want to go the extra mile you could go ahead and replace your freeze plugs back there if they've never been replaced um, they do rust they rust more from the inside than the outside so on the outside it might look you know in great shape but on the inside of your motor i promise you it's a lot more rusty so rear main seal and freeze plugs and you'll be set for a while as long as you don't burn up your clutch or anything and gotta crawl back under there and pull it so anyways next order of business i'm gonna get under there and put in the uh, pilot bearing and then bolt flywheel up i guess and then we'll keep chugging along from there so Let's crawl under the truck and get back into it. So, if you buy a good clutch kit, um, it should come with your pilot bearing. Um, some of them do, some of them don't. Verify that beforehand. Uh, these are cheap. So, you could always buy an extra and just have it on hand. That way, if your shows up and I don't have one in it, you're not having to run to the parts store. But, I'm going to... They come pre-greased. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there just for added insurance. And I actually like to grease the outside of it. That way, if you ever gotta replace it in the future or for the next guy, it is not freezed in there and rusted. You're gonna wanna find you a socket that uh, fits around it nicely. You don't wanna be hitting that actual bearing surface or you're gonna screw your bearing up. You're just wanting to hit this outside metal this one fits over it perfectly. 
it's an impact socket, so it's not gonna mar up. And uh, just get you your uh, favorite hammer, or as old Vice Grip Garage on YouTube likes to say, your fam favorite uh, Tanya Harding, and uh, pound her in there. <laughs> I'm actually going to take some uh, sandpaper and just clean out a little bit of surface rust that's in the back of my uh, uh, crankshaft because there's actually never been a pilot bearing in there because it's always been a uh, automatic truck. So I'm gonna clean that up just that way everything goes together a little more smoothly because um, this is a precision press fit. So if you got a lot of rust in there and you're trying to pound this thing in there, you're probably gonna end up messing something up. You're gonna mess that up and that bearing's not gonna turn smoothly and you're gonna be ripping your whole transmission out just to replace this daggone 10, $15 bearing. So little added insurance right now can make things a lot easier in the long run. So I'm gonna get some uh, sandpaper, gotta find it and we'll crawl under the truck and uh, get it in stock. All right guys, I'm gonna try to get y'all the uh, best video I can under here. A little difficult to film, not knock this camera over and stuff, but I'm just cleaning up this surface that this pilot bearing's gonna go in there. Just a little extra insurance to make things go smoothly. I'm gonna spray it out with some brake cleaner here. Being real liberal with that stuff. All right. So I got this little grease on there. This is your backside. So, if I'm guessing correctly, I haven't researched this, but I'm guessing um, these little notches right here, I'm assuming are, if you ever try to Replace this. I'm, I'm guessing the little fingers on your puller, it's a good spot for your fingers to go in there and have a good surface to, to uh, you know, grab onto so you can pull this out if you ever got to replace it. But I'm gonna push it up in there. Try to get it nice and flush. Make sure she's got a good, good start. I'm going to give it a go with my rubber mallet first. Oh, see, that's what you don't want. You don't want it cocking on you. Just needed a little persuasion with the, the bigger one. Oh, I love. Don't you just love working on cars on the ground? I can't wait to get a lift one day. Car lift. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this pounded in here. I'm gonna turn this camera off. I'm sure you don't wanna watch five minutes of me pounding. But y'all get the idea. Just make sure it goes in there real flush. All right, she's in there. You can tell uh, because of the way that it is. <laughs> uh, no, it's in there nice and flush with the back of the crank and the bearing spill spins good inside. That's how you know it's good to go. If you press it in there and that bearing inside there is not spinning, you better go ahead and yank that thing out and put your new one in because you're going to have problems. So. All right, next order of business, putting the uh, shield on there and mounting up our uh, flywheel. Okay, I got my parts laid out. My new flywheel. Got all my bolts cleaned up. That way they go in nice and easy and you can get a good torque on them. If they're all dirty, you know, like that, you're not gonna get an accurate torque when you torque them down. So make sure you clean your bolts. This plate right here 
has got to go on first. So make sure you install that first because once that's in there, if you want to get that on there, you got to take it all back apart. So if you, you get uh, all the way through installing your flywheel, getting your clutch all lined up with your clutch tool, getting it all set. I've even seen guys go all the way, you know, to mounting their daggum transmission and realize they left that out. So make sure you don't forget about this guy. Let me grab the, this is the automatic one that came out of it. They are different. So you can see there's a big difference. So don't reuse your automatic one. Um, I did see one guy, he accidentally put the automatic one back in the instead of the manual. And it didn't affect the drivability of the truck, but you know, he wanted to go back and redo it. So that meant him pulling out his entire transmission. So it's the little details that make the big difference. Um, also on these new flywheels, they got a protective coating on there. So spray some brake clean on there and get that coating off before you mount your clutch so you don't have any issues there. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about indexing this flywheel. It's very hard to tell, but those bolt holes are slightly off. Uh, they're, they're not a symmetrical pattern. So it will only bolt up to your crankshaft one way. So you don't have to worry about uh, indexing. That was something I was worried about when I actually pulled this motor out of the transmission before I started, or excuse me, when I pulled the transmission out of the junkyard and got the original flywheel, I didn't think to, you know, it, notate there was some way that it was specially indexed to the crankshaft because these are balanced fly, uh, flywheels. This is a 50 ounce flywheel. I believe like 80s and up, uh, as far as the F-150s, use a 50 ounce flywheel. And like the older 70s motors, 302s, manual transmissions, they use a 28 ounce, 28 ounce uh, flywheel. So just do a little research and make sure you're putting the right flywheel in your truck. But you don't have to worry about orientation on these. They'll only bolt up one way. So anyways, I'm gonna get all this stuff transfer it down there and start bolting it up. All right, I got my flywheel and plate. Uh, I'm not sure what they call this plate. Uh, consider it like a dust cover maybe. Not sure what the technical name for it is, but anyways, I got my shield on there and just a quick little tip, that shield while you're installing this flywheel is gonna wanna keep falling down, so. Just put you a bolt on each side. Uh, there's dowel pins that it lines up on on each side. But throw you a bolt in there, and that'll hold that shield up for you. That way it don't keep trying to fall down in your face. But I was going to show you. I got that flywheel mounted. As you can see, these three holes look perfect. But these ones don't line up. So it's just like a sixteenth of an inch off. And it just protects you from not being able to mount that flywheel incorrectly. But I'm going to get it lined up correctly, get all the bolts in, and then you're going to want to torque it down. Uh, Got to look the torque spec up. I think it's either 78 or like 84 pounds of torque. Uh, we'll get it mounted up and then move on to the next step. After a quick Google search, we're looking for... 75 to 85 pounds of torque on the flywheel bolts. So I got my handy dandy torque wrench set to 85 and you're going to want to torque it down in a star pattern. So let me get under the truck and I'll show you. All right. If you're new to torquing stuff down, a star pattern is just like you torque your wheels. If you, well, if you never torque your wheels, you're about to learn something, but You'll torque this one, go down to here, go down to there, 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 there. You know, there's different ways to do it. You can go to here to here, 
there, 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 or there, there, there. You know, it ain't rocket science. You just don't want to torque them down in a circle because when you torque stuff down in a circle, um, you can torque it down cocked. And then you're going to have cranking issues with your starter lining up. So just make sure you torque it down where it's sucking itself down flat and not sucking itself down with the top tilted down or something like that. But like I said, we're looking for uh, 75 to 85 pounds of torque. I always like to go on the high end. A little extra torque never hurt. Now your motor might want to spin while you're doing this. I'm not sure if mine's going to do it or not. But if it does, just find some way on the front of the motor. Put a breaker bar up there or something with a socket on the... Uh, one of the... Uh, uh, damp uh, balancer uh, bolts up there and just kind of wedge it in there so the motor can't turn but we're gonna see what happens here yep mine's wanting to turn all right well let me get it uh where it, the motor's not gonna spin and then we'll continue this torque down process well i made a little boo-boo I learned that there's actually multiple length bolts that the internet recommends for your flywheel. And I installed the wrong one. I actually used the bolt from my flex plate. And uh, that is not the right bolt. So when you're doing this swap, do not use your flex plate bolts. Get flywheel bolts because there is a difference. Um, let me flip the camera around and show you what I learned. So, as you can see, that middle bolt is nice and stripped. That is your stock automatic flex plate bolt. And as you can see, the threads don't go all the way to the end of it. So, when I was trying to torque it down, I was only getting like six threads of engagement. And I literally stripped every single one of them. Thank God I didn't actually strip... Uh, the threads in my uh, crankshaft but just for some insurance I went ahead and got a 7 16 dash 20 tap and cleaned them up but they were in really good shape so man I really uh, dodged a bullet there this is what I ordered um, and everybody on the internet said was the right uh, bolt that is a Dorman 14.55.7 and you can see 7 sixteenths dash 20 by 900 thousands. Um, Dorman also makes another one that wasn't in stock around me and it was going to take forever to get to me. That is 7 sixteenths dash 20 by 100. So it, it's an inch. Digging through all my stuff, I remembered when I actually took this transmission and flywheel out of the junkyard. I kept the OEM uh, manual flywheel bolts. And as you can see, there is a big difference. You're getting a lot more thread engagement because your flywheel is a lot thicker than your flex plate. Um, I'll put the Dorman beside it. It's kind of kind of hard to compare. Let me do it this way. But you can see the Dorman, you're still not getting as many threads on the back of your crankshaft as a OEM uh, flywheel bolt. I also ordered these ARP, they're 7 16ths dash, uh, it's supposed to be dash 20. Somebody actually labeled this package wrong, but I put a, a thread gauge on them and they are 7 16ths dash 20, but they're one. 0 0.250, so an inch and a quarter long. So they're actually longer than your OEM bolt. The only thing is uh, the heads are rather uh, thick. So I wasn't sure if they were gonna interfere with the uh, clutch and all that. So I'm just gonna go with the OEM bolt with some red Loctite to make sure they don't back out and go anywhere. So anyways, that's just the uh, tech tip of the day. 
learn from my mistake because I almost made a catastrophic mistake. All right, we got it all mounted up, pressure plate on. Got all the new ARP pressure plate bolts installed. Looking pretty good. There's the uh, ARP torque sheet, recommended foot pounds. And that's your clutch install tool. You wanna make sure that goes in there nice and easy, lines up with your pilot bearing. When you install this pressure plate, uh, you install your clutch first, obviously, with this tool in it, and that helps line everything up. And then you wanna torque that down in a star pattern as well. That way it seats nice and flush and not you're just not tightening one side down and pulling and cocking it because then this tool won't line up well. And uh, you'll know if you did it wrong, if you can't pull that thing out or it's real hard to pull in and out, but pretty simple and uh, not too bad of a job. But next order of business is uh, mounting the transmission up. I already cleaned up the transmission. I'll show you that and show you how to put your uh, throw out bearing on there. Here's the coveted four speed. That is your throw out bearing. It slides right into your uh, clutch fork right there. There's a little ball on the back of that that your clutch fork has two uh, clips. It clips onto there. Just make sure your uh, shaft right there is a uh, nice and smooth put a little grease on it i like to put a little grease on the actual input shaft that's going into the uh back of your uh belt or back of your motor your crankshaft and uh i like to put extra grease right there where it goes into the uh bushing or technically this is a bearing that i put in there but uh pretty simple and you just want to, before you put it in, make sure your front seal ain't leaking. If it is, go ahead and replace that. And make sure you got it in neutral. So when you put it up in there, you may have to turn this uh, input shaft to get it to line up right and go in your clutch. But other than that, it's pretty simple. And uh, always replace your throw out bearing. Um, they go bad pretty easily. So it's just a little added insurance. Going ahead and putting a new one in there. But Anyways, I'm going to get it slid under the truck here and see if we can't get her mounted up. Good news, she bolted right up. Got the speedo cable hooked up. Trans mount bolted to the cross member. Cross member bolted back in. Everything went smoothly. Got the shifter up through the floor. So, wasn't too bad. I used my jack there. And ended up using some uh, ratchet straps to kind of give me some extra hands just to hold it in place. Ran the ratchet straps from frame to frame. And uh, they worked real well. Uh, just acting really as an extra set of hands. So if you got some small ratchet straps, get them out if you ain't got a helper. And that should help you just kind of hold it steady and get stuff exactly lined up how you need it. Um, I actually seen a, another guy on YouTube sure y'all know him by script garage he uh he talked about that trick and i used it this time and it worked really well so anyways next order of business um bolting the drive shaft back up getting our new starter in i'll get up uh off this ground here and tell y'all about the starter situation when you're doing a automatic to manual swap i didn't know this um after doing some research, the manual and automatic starters look almost identical, but this cone uh, is actually a little bit different. Or maybe, I'm not sure if it's the cone length or just how far that appendix comes out, but there is a difference. Um, I believe, and this is, you know, different things that are said on the internet, so take it for what it's worth, but... Some of the old timers were saying a manual starter can bolt onto an automatic and still work, but an automatic can't bolt up to a manual and work. So I'm not sure, but if you're in a bind, 
you might could throw an automatic starter onto your manual to get you out of a you know sticky situation but anyways i went ahead picked up this new starter right here for a manual just got to get that installed that's easy uh literally just these two bolts you guys know how to bolt a starter in i'm sure and then after we get the drive shaft installed last order of business uh for right now is uh mounting this slave cylinder in there and bleeding the whole clutch system this is the clutch line i got uh it's a doorman uh, they got a stupid sticker over the part number but i would tell y'all guys the full part number sorry about that but anyways i'm gonna bench bleed this system uh kind of the master cylinder clutch master is already in the truck right there but i saw a guy on youtube another guy showing how to uh bleed this system easier way before you actually mount it up to the transmission so i'm gonna try that all right i got my old starter off got it right next to the new manual starter and you can see the opening is bigger on the automatic you can see more of that gear and on the manual starter you can only see about a third of the gear so that's the biggest difference i'm seeing between the two of them other than that they look identical um so yeah i don't know i don't know if they're interchangeable i would in my opinion i would assume not but like I said on the forms, it said if you're going from a manual to automatic, you can reuse your starter. But in our case, where we're doing an automatic to manual swap, you got to get a manual starter. So anyways, let's get this plopped up in there and mount it up. pretty easy to get these starters in especially when you don't have any heads on these trucks and an exhaust pipe to work around but like I said it's just two bolts just like obviously when you removed it and then mine is just a one wire starter and it connects to this post right here and uh, just get it up in there make sure your uh, bolts are lined up real good because you don't want to cross thread this aluminum housing or you're gonna have a bad day and you don't have to torque it like crazy um you can put a little loctite on them if you want i usually don't i don't have any problems with them backing out over the years i'm a little leery of putting loctite from steel to aluminum because you can snap these casings pretty easy and uh these transmissions are getting harder and harder to find so at your discretion, you, you make that call, but I'm gonna finish tightening her down, getting her snugged up, and uh, hopefully she's all lined up right. We don't have to use any shims, but we'll see. Well, this was something I was worried about. I could not verify on the internet if this drive shaft can swap over from automatic to manual. I measured the transmission and it was very similar in length to the automatic. And the uh, um, shaft is going into the back of the transmission. And it seems like a nice good fit tight or good tight fit. <clears throat> My only question is, is it gonna be the right length? So, get your put on. Oh yeah, there we go. Now, have to crawl down there and see how we're looking well as of right now it bolted or i just got it sitting in there don't got it bolted down yet but looks like it may work you can use your automatic drive shaft and this manual swap if your transmissions are roughly the same length 
I'll know for sure when I set this truck down and take it for a test drive because as your suspension travels, your drive shaft moves in and out. So we'll know if anything's binding pretty quickly. But as of right now, we're looking pretty good. But I'll let you guys know the final verdict on this drive shaft once we set her back down on the ground and give her a test drive. Clutch, master and slave cylinder is bled. Your slave cylinder is right there, what you're looking at. It's all installed. Got the line run. I will say that is not the correct line. Um, it works, but I think you can find a much better uh, line that uh, is a lot shorter. This one's much longer than it needs to be. I'll probably end up replacing it. Um, if not, it's the way it's ran. You can't see it right now, but the way, the way it's ran, it's uh, against the frame rail and vibrations will eventually rub a hole through that plastic line. So I'm gonna see if I can't find a stainless line, like stainless braided line or the correct line. Um, but right now it works good enough that we can test it and take it for a test drive. But uh, this little piece right here, if you lose your original one, you can buy those uh, offline on eBay and stuff. There's one company that actually, uh, I guess it's like 3D prints them. And it's just as good as the OEM one. That's the only place I've found that has them. If you lose yours, you're ordering it from them or going to the junkyard. But that's the little retaining clip that, you know, holds the slave cylinder on the transmission. But anyways, I'll throw a little clip in here of it actually working. You can see it. Uh, pushing against the clutch fork and the depressing those clutch fingers in there. I, uh, because I already installed that master cylinder up there, I had to bench bleed it under here, but it's a pretty simple process. Just uh, you can actually bench bleed the slave cylinder on your uh, tabletop. You're just going to loosen the bleeder screw, pour a little fluid in there, and pump this uh, pump that rod back and forth, and it'll expel the air out of there. And you just keep doing that until you're not getting air out of it. There's a little bleeder screw right on top there. You'll see it. It's a mine was a five thirty seconds Allen head. Yours may be different, but. Go ahead and just bench bleed your uh, slave cylinder on the, the uh, table. Then you can come in here and install it and hook it up to your uh, uh, clutch hose. Then you're going to want to pour fluid up into your master cylinder. Crack that bleeder till that fluid comes pouring down through here. And you get a good steady stream, no air bubbles. You can actually pump this rod as well while you're down here and get any more air out of it. And then uh, it's just like bleeding your brakes you're gonna get in the trunk have somebody pump them up come down here let that uh bleeder screw off for a few seconds let the air come out and just repeat that process i'll show you how i do it by myself the major most important thing is to make sure that master cylinder stays full of fluid while you do this you don't want to run it dry and get air back in your system i just uh come in here I pumped that clutch pedal 15, 20 times. And then uh, this is my helper tonight. You'll just depress that clutch. Come in here. It's hard to do this one handed, but I put this towel on here. That way I don't damage my seat. Well, you'll just use this. Uh, you'll press that down and shove that piece of wood in there. And uh, uh, there we go. Got the clutch pedal pressed down. It's against the seat, just like someone's pressing on it with their foot. And you go crawl back underneath the truck and let that bleeder screw off for a few seconds. Close it back up. You don't want to let it go completely dry. Come back up here, pull your board out, pump it up. Do it again, just like a uh, bleeding freak. Anyways, that's uh, it for tonight. I'm going to crawl back under there and install my headers again i found these nifty bolts online they actually have a little allen head socket inside the bolt because these headers are 
extremely hard to get on uh, these uh, these heads because the bolts are so close to the actual exhaust manifolds. You can't get a socket on there. I actually had to grind down one of my wrenches, but those are going to make it a lot easier to get them installed. But I'm calling it a night. I've been out here for a few hours. We got her pretty much buttoned up. Uh, got the drive shaft installed. All that good stuff. All that's left is headers. And uh, I got to figure out the neutral safety switch. Since I deleted it, I'm going to have to wire it so it lets the, no lets the truck know it's in neutral so I can start it. But other than that, uh, I think she's about ready to drop on the ground and go for a test drive. Fingers crossed there's no issues, but uh, I'll pick up uh, tomorrow when it's uh, bright and sunny. It's about uh, 2 a.m. right now. But anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's Friday night, the next day. Time to jump back on this old uh, girl and see if we can't get it wrapped up. At least cranked up tonight and uh, take her for a little test drive. I got some friends in the shop. Y'all wave. <laughs> it's Friday night. They ain't got no school tomorrow, so they're hanging out with me. And the wife's in her little room. You can't see it back there, but she's in there sewing. So it's a good Friday night. Anyways, I'm going to start on this neutral safety switch and getting it uh, wired up. I'll show you how I do that. So this is your neutral safety switch connector. It's a four pin connector. Um, depending on what transmission you have, I believe like the C6 uh, has, it's only a two pin connector. Um, really, it just depends on what transmission you have. They're all a little bit different, but on the AOD transmissions, it's a four pin connector. Uh, these two wires are gonna be for your uh, reverse. The neutral safety switch wires are these blue wires and they have a uh, blue strip on them so anyways all you got to do to bypass it is just cut these right here leave you a little bit on there in case you ever have to reuse this uh connector so i'm gonna cut it right here in the middle and you just splice them together and that will uh trick this harness into thinking the uh transmissions in neutral and that is how you bypass your neutral safety switch so that's all you're looking for right there just a little spliced in loop. I put a heat shrink connector on it and a little bit of extra heat shrink since it's going to be underneath the truck and it'll be exposed to a lot of corrosion. So. Good news, got the headers on. And uh, while I had the truck five foot in the air, I decided to go ahead and change the fluid in the transmission. That way we got a good new fluid starting out. And I also went ahead and drained the motor of oil that way it's got good fresh oil and we're starting fresh on it too and it makes it a lot easier because this truck's so low to go ahead and uh drain that oil while it's five foot in there <laughs> so took advantage of that the oil isn't gonna be here till tomorrow uh, amazon primed it and uh i live way out here in the country so i let them spend their gas money delivering stuff to me but Anyways, I got the headers on and all tightened down. Those are a bear. I hate installing those headers. So the, they just give you no room to install them bolts. The little aftermarket bolts that I bought with the Allen head uh, socket basically in them work pretty good. Um, not as good as quality as the ARP bolts that I had in it before. So I only use them on certain certain spots where it's real hard to get a wrench on there. But uh, I'm trying to think, I got the battery all hooked up and installed. She's ready to rock and roll other than just filling the oil up tomorrow. All right, boys, should be a good day if everything goes well. Amazon Prime brought me my oil. I'm gonna fill her up. And uh, we're gonna bump that starter and see what she does. So, fingers crossed, there ain't no problems and uh, everything goes as planned. See if all our hard work 
came to fruition and uh, we followed directions correctly. <laughs> and uh, hopefully God will bless me and this thing will uh, be driving down the road here in a couple minutes. Let's get her filled up with that good stuff, that full synthetic. And uh, I'm gonna jump in this thing, press that clutch down, make sure she's in neutral and hit that key. So let me get it filled up and we'll get her cranked up. with that guys to be honest with you i'm pretty ecstatic that it works with no issues right off the rip um, i'll put some more road miles on her and see if anything arises but right now she's driving great i took her out on the main road uh, for a test got her all the way in the fourth and uh she was cruising definitely got to get some mufflers on it because <laughs> it's ridiculously loud with them open headers and uh Anyways, guys, hey, thanks for watching. If you watched this entire video, I appreciate it. I really hope it helped y'all out and uh, gave you an idea of what it takes to do one of these swaps. If you would, if you appreciate all the hard work I put in this video, hit that subscribe button. That way you can come back, find it again if you ever need it, or uh, see the new content that I post on the channel. And I got a lot of old content on this truck and uh, OBS Fords, Bullnose Fords, Bron uh, Bricknose Fords, Chevrolets, Harleys, boats, four-wheelers, jet skis, you name it, we got it. Plus a lot of car show content, pinup contest. So we got it all on the channel. I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, smash that like button if, if, if you like the video and it helped you out. That helps promote my content on YouTube and uh, gets me some views. I don't, I don't post ads or, uh, you know, do promotional stuff in my video. Only way I make any content off YouTube is just y'all's viewing and subscribing. So I appreciate everybody that's already subscribed and comments on the channel all the time and uh, leaves me positive info and, and encouragement. I really appreciate you guys. I thank y'all a lot. And uh, I guess I'll catch y'all in the next video. If you got any comments, questions, uh, want to add some stuff, want to add some info, Drop it down uh, below. Help other guys out if they're doing one of these swaps. If I missed something and you saw it, uh, you know, put it down there. Let us know. Maybe I missed something critical and I don't realize it yet. Bleep, bloop it down below. That way I can read it and uh, fix it. And uh, if y'all got any good links, uh, any good part numbers, anything you can help other guys out doing this swap, Feel free to comment below. I read everything. I appreciate the people that do comment and uh, leave 
constructive criticism, you know, questions and uh, order people that just say, hey, really appreciate the video. Good job. Thank y'all, man. I really appreciate all y'all. So anyways, we'll catch y'all on the next video. Till next time. Peace.